Now the next thing we're going to focus on is the preparation of alkynes, and uh, alkynes are just made by E2 elimination, and we saw uh, we made alkenes with this, and uh, just as a reminder here, with E2 elimination, uh, we'd have a nice strong base like sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, sodium ethoxide, uh, or maybe a bulky base t butoxide. Uh, and in this case, with E2 elimination, everything's a nice concerted mechanism. We deprotonate, proton transfer, frees up these electrons to make the pi bond, and kicks off the leaving group all in the same step. And in here, we'd get a nice, lovely alkene. Well, in this case, to make an alkyne, we actually want to make two pi bonds, not just one. Uh, and it turns out, uh, the first step of that would be okay with the traditional strong bases we've been using, but the second step, which would start with the alkyne, would not, I'm sorry, would start with the alkene, uh, it wouldn't work. We need a stronger base. And the stronger base that we're going to use here is called sodium amide. So that's this lovely species right here. So and it's the NH2 minus, the amide ion here, the amide anion, uh, that's going to act as our strong base. And first step, we'll just come and deprotonate one of the H's, so forming our first pi bond. So just normal E2 elimination like we've seen in the past. So we'd get here, we'd still have one H here, and we'd still have a bromine here as well. So And then another equivalent's going to come in of our amide ion. So, and it's going to come in and deprotonate this other hydrogen. It's this step specifically that we really need our strong base for here. So just another step of E2 elimination. So, and that looks like it gets us to our product just fine here, except we're not done. As we learned on the last slide here, so we've got a terminal alkyne, and sodium amide will also deprotonate that. And so if you notice, we're adding excess amide here. So, and another equivalent is going to come in and deprotonate this. And this last step, the pKa's are so favorable here that this last step essentially occurs 100%, or 99.9999, same diff. And so at the end here, we end up with this ion. And this is great. The fact that this last step is 100% means that even if the rest of the steps don't produce a good yield of our alkyne, this last step will drag everything through according to Le Chatelier's principle. Uh, but this is also why we have to afterwards add some water just simply to reprotonate that terminal carbon and get our alkyne back. And so that's why we usually follow this up with a second step of water, just kind of an acid workup of sorts. Uh, but that's the idea here. And on the next slide, we'll see what these geminal and vicinal dihalides here look like. But the, the big thing is that if I want to do uh, two steps of elimination, I have to have two leaving groups. So there's a couple different ways we could have those two good leaving groups arranged, and they could be on the same carbon as we see here as well as here, uh, but they could be also on adjacent carbons as we see here, and if they're on the same carbon, we call those geminal dihalides, and if they're on adjacent carbons, we call that a vicinal dihalide, and, and in either case, this will work, and we'll see that sodium amide here actually favors the formation of terminal alkynes, uh, and it's not a reaction we're going to go through here, but even if you had your halides uh, more internal to a molecule, uh, it turns out if you use sodium amide, they'll make their way to the end of the molecule through what's called a zipper reaction, and that's not the most important thing in the world here. Uh, but in this case, whether you've got them on the, the terminal carbon here, uh, one away, or one on each in a vicinal dihalide, adding excess sodium amide followed by water will get you your terminal alkyne.